In Matthew 24, we have the account of how Jesus and the disciples leave Jerusalem. Uh, Jesus has finished his public ministry. He's preparing his disciples for the cross. And as the disciples are marveling at the temple and its amazing structure, Jesus tells them that the temple will be destroyed. So they end up out at the Mount of Olives and the disciples ask him, they say, tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Three questions in one and very different to them than to us. When most of us would read the question about the sign of your coming, we would think that means Jesus return because that's what we're waiting for. The disciples meant, what would be the sign of your coming to Jerusalem to sit on David's throne, to restore Israel to its former glory, and to kick the Roman Empire out of their nation? That's what they wanted to know. What's the sign of your coming? Because Jesus just told them Jerusalem will be destroyed. That made no sense because that's where the Messiah was supposed to come and establish David's throne. So now Jesus has answered these questions. He's answered not exactly as they asked them, but he did explain to them something of what to watch for when Jerusalem would be destroyed. And now we finally get to the last, or, or, or to the part about his sign of his coming. Now remember, the disciples were asking, what will be the sign of your coming to Jerusalem to establish David's throne? Jesus had already done that. He was doing it right then. In his death and resurrection, he fulfilled everything about sitting on David's throne and restoring the people of God. But they wanted to know what would be the sign of your coming. So he tells them, and, and this is phenomenal to me, how he did it. He said, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will fall from heaven and the power of the heavens will be shaken. Then will appear in heaven the sign of the Son of Man. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call and they will gather his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. The focus for me today is on the connection between the disciples asking what will be the sign of your coming and Jesus saying that what they will see is the sign of the Son of Man appearing in heaven. I remember the day, I don't remember what exact date it was, but I remember the day when I was reading this and I had this big smile come to my face because I realized what Jesus' answer to the question was. The question was, what will be the sign of your coming? And his answer was, my coming? The sign of my coming will be my coming? Isn't that crazy? They asked, what is the sign? This is his first reference to the sign. And before this, he ruled out any possibility that there could be something prior to his coming that would be a sign. He said, don't believe anybody who says anything about me being here as a sign. There will be no sign. So he says, what will be the sign? When you see me, that will be the sign. Think of what that should do to us. This morning I was reminded of how I have learned to look at these scriptures like a child opening a photo album. They're pictures. Study them all you want, 
you won't see more than the pictures. That's what they are. They're pictures of what will happen. That's for us. And it's actually better for us to become like a little child, like Jesus said, and to just look at the pictures and know that's what's going to happen. Now be a child, just enjoy that. It's almost, I can picture my, uh, my first time coming to the book of Revelation after I had learned to just read God's word every day to listen to him. And I, I made it personal, like if that's what's standing out to me, that's what God's teaching me, it's personal. And whatever it is, I have to put it into practice. Well, I came to Revelation after quite some time of learning to simply meditate on God's word and listen to him like he's speaking to me. And I wondered, could that happen in the book of Revelation? That I could just get something every day that would feel like God was speaking to me and giving me exactly what I needed? Well, I had enough experiences already of God surprising me with things he taught me each day based on what I needed. And I was sure that he would keep doing it. I just didn't know what it would be like. It'd be like going to some place for the first time and being excited about it, but you still haven't tried it. You haven't actually walked that trail. You haven't seen those viewpoints. And that's the way I came to Revelation. Like it was the first time because this time I was going to be listening for whatever father was telling me each day. So it began to be, you know, those really complex coloring books. They call them adult books. It just, it means it's more complex than a child's book. Well, picture the book of Revelation, like you open a page and it's not colored in yet. All the lines are there. The picture's there, but it's not colored in. And as you read and you pray through it, all of a sudden God points something out and you color it in. And you see, wow, that's cool, that's amazing. And then the next day, you read the same passage and you try to carry on and something else stands out. And it's a different color and you color it in. It's like, that's amazing. But what's that picture? Look at that. And as you meditate on God's word, it's like God's telling you what to color in each day in the picture that's already there. And you coloring it in makes it real in your mind, in your heart. So I come to this picture in Matthew 24, where the disciples ask, what will be the sign of your coming? And Jesus says, then will appear in heaven the sign of the Son of Man. Okay, this would be a beautiful day. Can't you picture it over there? Then will appear in heaven the sign of the Son of Man. That's it, it'll just appear and you'll know it. Everyone will. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn. What that means, folks, is when Jesus appears, it's over. No more gospel. The doors closed. The parable of the 10 virgins. The five were ready and they went in. And while the others went to replenish their oil, it was too late and the door was closed. That's what's gonna happen. The nations will mourn, partly because Jesus is real, and that means he's here to judge them, and partly because they are doomed. That's the only thing. Anybody who has not received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior is doomed under the judgment of God. But at the same time, and he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. The four winds, and I, I'm just gonna give you what I see in the picture. The four winds is around the earth, just a figure of speech, from every part of the earth. From one end of heaven to the other, it's talking about heaven. What do we know is gonna happen at the return of Christ? The dead in Christ will be raised first, okay? 
they will be gathered from the heavens and raised from the dead. And whoever's still alive at the time from the four winds, they will be gathered together to be with the Lord in the air as he returns and the nations mourn because his judgment has come. What's called the day of wrath has come. I want to encourage you. If, you. if you know and love the Lord Jesus Christ because you've received him as your Lord and Savior, he's, you've confessed with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and you believed in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you don't need to know anything beyond what is written. You don't need to know exactly what it will look like when that sign appears, because as soon as it happens, you will know. You will not miss it. And when Jesus returns, that's when we go to be with him. And nobody has a chance to hear the gospel after that. Share the gospel now while there is time because there will be no other signs of Jesus coming than the sign of his appearing. So make him known now. Have your time with God every day. Even if all you did was tell someone, guess what I learned from the word today? You're giving testimony to the reality of Christ in you, the hope of glory. So just do it. Live for Jesus, serve the people of God in love, make Jesus known to others as often as you have opportunity, and look at the skies, look to the heavens, for the Lord will come.